All right, so here we have the Kodak Ektra outside of the box. As you can tell, it's a phone model to look like a camera, pretty much, at least an old school Super 8 camera, because it comes with a nice metallic framing going on around here on the sides as well as the top, or at least what's considered the top when you put it in a portrait style. And then here on the sides, besides, besides having the little pleathery look to the front here, as well as the Kodak symbol there in the front, you also have this little curvature going down here at the bottom so that not only can you grab it just a little bit easier especially when you're taking photos but also to kind of give it that look like old school uh, film cameras used to have especially those super 8 cameras and so kodak really put an emphasis on photo taking and video capturing with this camera and if you couldn't already tell from the design you can also tell from the giant ass lens that you have here on the back of the cell phone because Taking pictures and recording video is key for this for this uh, cell phone. We are dealing with a 26.5 millimeter lens that shoots in 21 megapixels of detail whenever you shoot photo and video, at least depending on the specs and the things that you choose to film because you can modify that. It's dealing with a five inch screen, so rather large. Uh, not exactly the biggest thing out there because I understand that there's bigger phones uh, in the cell phone landscape, but this is a screen that gets the job done that never feels like it's obstructing anything as far as I can tell. And the front facing camera. Now, of course, the front facing camera is not gonna be as great or meticulous as the front facing one, but it's still a little bit above average than what you normally get with usual cell phones, especially the old iPod uh, touch that I used to have. It's like a fifth or sixth generation and this topples it. So the way they mapped out these buttons can be just a little weird from time to time, especially the way that the headphone jack is placed at the top as opposed to the bottom because they had to make space for this curvature here. They can't really risk putting any kind of holes right here that you can plug into, even though they did manage to put the USB plug right there so you can charge your phone, which uses a Type-C uh, USB port. So if you ever lose the charger that came inside of the box, like I showed during the unboxing, then you could always get one as long as it's Type-C. So I found it a little weird that they put the 3.5 millimeter jack at the top of the phone. And so whenever you put a jack like for head your headphones or anything like that, or like your uh, hands hands-free microphone, it could prove a little problematic that you have this sticking out as opposed to having it in the direction of where your headphones or whatever it is type of wire that they're plugging into is facing. So it would have been a little more convenient and rather pragmatic to put it down here at the at the bottom. You got the volume up and down buttons right there as well as the power button. Then next to the power button, you actually have what is called a codec button. The codec button is used to either go directly to the camera functions when you're on the lock screen right there or to simply just take photos in a much more professional manner so if you take the grip right here hold it like this you have the shutter button as it's then kind of turned into and use that to take pictures a little bit more conveniently and then lastly on this side you have a sticker that has the model and serial numbers so that in case you need them and then a little slit here which is basically where you put the SD card and the sim card should you need them and basically to open it up you need that little piece of metallic cutout that you saw during the unboxing you take that you put it into the little the little hole right there and you pull out the entire tray to fit whatever cards you need to whether it be the micro SD card or the sim card if you want to make calls and you want to make this kind of like a prepaid phone then you could do that so it takes a little fidgeting to get that working I kind of wish that it was just a straightforward little slit where you could just reach in there with your nail or something and just pull out the tab or pull out the lid and just slide the cards in like normal phones or usually other different type of devices do but at least it has a little section where you could put both at the same time as opposed to putting one card here and then another one in a different place or overlap the two and they're they're both separated within the tray so it's like okay they're not overlapping you don't have to worry about mixing one with the other and then before i forget you do have some touch sensitive buttons here you got your basic home button your back button and as well as the different program button where if you tap it you get to pull up all the programs and to decide which one you want to close which one you want to pull up the usual os functions the only issue that might be just personal for me or it could be problematic for some of you is that whenever you hold the phone at least in one hand there's gonna be more than one occasion uh, per use of the phone where you have it on and your hand depending on how big your hand is might 
end up touching this square button and it might pull you out from some of the programs you're probably looking at or some of the applications that you're using and that could get annoying from time to time so you it's just a matter of getting used to having there be a touch sensitive button here now as I mentioned throughout the review this phone does run on the Android OS system not obviously the iOS from the Apple so it's mostly the same as any Android phone would be, so I'm not going to spend too much time really breaking down how Android works. It, by this point, you have decided, if you have a cell phone, you have decided and made up your mind if you're either Team Apple or Team Android. The only thing that I can probably kind of uh, put here as a disclaimer is that the only difference between this Android OS than most uh, Android OSs is that Kodak Extra kind of put in their own little proprietary applications that are called like Kodak Super 8, Kodak this, Kodak that, Slideshow. And basically, they're very photo and video centric apps. And I gotta be honest, they're not exactly the best apps. They felt like those apps that you kind of download from the App Store, whether it be through Android or through iPhone, that simulate the look of a old film camera, as well as the menu turning into something that looks like a camera where you roll the f-stop and it makes it look like you're rolling the film i don't know it, it, it's a little gimmicky i never really liked the, those type of apps uh, prior to even getting this phone i always thought that they looked kind of hokey because it looked like it was made in like a week by somebody in their basement and i gotta be honest for somebody like kodak to make those kind of apps and put them into their own little phone that they're putting a huge emphasis on it being a camera phone as opposed to just a camera phone then it's a little underwhelming to see that those apps aren't really fully realized so at this point i find myself rather just either taking the photos that i want to or taking the videos that i want to with this camera and then through post-production load them up onto my computer or whatever it is that i'm going to use to edit and edit there rather than me using those apps now that's another thing if you're planning on getting this phone unlocked and you want to be able to put your own provider there are some providers that are kind of limited and there are some providers that are completely omitted from being used on this phone i can't remember them from the top of my head but i know that verizon and i think virgin mobile are two providers that are unfortunately not supported by this phone but then other popular ones like sprint and t-mobile are as well as various other prepaid uh lower tier providers that you could definitely look into and see if they're compatible with this phone outside of that the camera on this phone is pretty damn good but i will admit it does fall short in certain areas that i think they could have perfected a little bit and could potentially still do if they were to release like updates and patches for this phone because i think it's possible i think it's possible for them to kind of tinker and work in the areas that it could use improvement because the camera quality on this phone is very sharp and very good but depending on the environment that you're in i'll put it this way taking photos is a blast with this camera because the lens really is that great the pictures are really vibrant they're really sharp especially when you shoot both a raw file and a jpeg at the same time and most importantly it has a really well established dslr functionality whenever you pull up the taking photo uh, application uh, whether it be through the apps the kodak apps or just the button right here to kind of jump into it via the android system it pulls up this little rotary wheel down the corner that functions similar to the one that i'm using the one here on the camera there i'm filming this review with it's rather identical where you go through manual you go through micro you go through portrait as well as both a panorama mode and then the auto mode that chooses the settings for you depending on the situation that you're in or the environment that you're in and for the most part the photos are great granted this is, I think, where the first issue kind of comes into play, which is where the panorama mode is actually one of my favorites because I feel like I can take white shots and really take advantage of the, the pan and scan to be able to fuse everything together. And it's actually one of the best panorama modes that I've seen in a while. It's better than my iPod because w even if you do move the phone slightly when you're trying to take the panorama and you're kind of moving around, it adjusts it so that there's never like a cutoff point or it never looks like it's jagged like ipod touch or iphone sometimes does this refines that but through taking photos as well as video the environment is a huge factor because you can change the white balance you can change the daylight settings all that to kind of change the color temperature change how how sharp as well as how bright the image is you can tap it with the iso pretty much anything that you can do usually with a dslr or mirrorless camera like the one that i'm using right now you can do it with this phone now is it as great as those cameras not 100 i will admit that cameras and dslrs that are 
their sole focus and sole purpose is to, to take those photos are probably going to be your better bet as opposed to this phone. But this is a really good backup to have when you don't have your camera nearby, but you want something that's above average. This is it with that camera control as well as that camera picture quality that you're getting because it's sharper than most cameras are. It's just that if you're an avid photographer and you're an avid video maker, it might come off short because as many functions as it has, it doesn't 100% master every single little one. There's probably going to be some that you're going to prefer over others. And I, like I said, I prefer the panorama mode as well as the film taking, uh, the video taking mode over some of the other fo uh, photo modes that I do like. And then others that I, I was like, ah, oh, that could be done a little bit better. Like my macro, I think that macro could have been a, a little better when I approach, uh, when I take this camera, put it as close as I possibly can to something tiny and keep the focus still in check. Sometimes I need to back it up a little bit. And that's a shame because I want to get closer and yet it's, starting to get out of focus the closer that I get to even if we're just talking about centimeters apart which again better than average but it's a little underwhelming to see that I had these huge aspirations to get super close to some kind of item and now it looks like I have to pull out a little bit to keep the focus in check the same could be said about low lighting situations I tried taking a couple of selfies and photos and videos here inside of this room but with these three primary lights that I'm using to eliminate my scene right now I turned them off and I'm just and I was just using the lamp that's over here in the corner that I just used to illuminate the room when I'm just on my computer or I'm watching TV or I'm playing video games and I tried to take some photos with just that and the low lighting again better than average but not as great as what a $400 camera phone should deliver and thankfully it does come with an additional flash here on the side that does illuminate it enough to get that sharpness, that quality that you would normally get during daylight situations. Now recording video is pretty well well made, especially when you're in the daylight and you're in a very illuminated space such as this. It records not only in 720p and 1080p modes, but also 4K. In fact, this is probably the only 4K recording device that I have at the moment. And I do plan on using it effectively to see exactly how the 4K resolution comes across in different situations, like I said, whether it be low lighting, daylight, uh, nighttime. However, none of those DSLR functions that I just mentioned that you can tamper with and mess around with in photo taking mode are not present in video making mode. And I gotta be honest, that was a little bit of a deal breaker when I was looking up the specs for this the, this phone, but I still took the gamble and went with it. But then that's when cameras like the one that I'm using to record this review with become more superior because I can actually change the iOS, the iOS, the ISO, as well as the shutter speed and all that good stuff on the fly with the video recording functionality. Whereas this one I can't. Right when I jump into video taking mode, that's when my functions are very limited and the settings that I can switch to is uh, are between 1080p, 720p, or 4K. Now, as for the actual quality of the lens, sometimes it could appear just a little blurry, especially in low lighting when the motion blur can be a little bit more easily detected than in other situations. And then when it's out in a very bright and very lit a scene like this one here or one that involves uh, the streets or the uh, outdoor environment during the daytime that's when the 4k resolution of the film taking mode really shines it really uh, pops out and makes me go oh wow this is cool the only thing I think could have been tweaked a little bit better would have been the image stabilization because I didn't notice that the image would get just a little janky even if the quality and the detail that's coming across from the lens is very sharp and detailed, holding it in one hand, it can be a little bit intrusive. I think it's recommended that you hold it with two hands whenever you're recording in 4K mode, especially outside. Although I'm pleasantly surprised that when you do record video, the audio quality is actually pretty damn good. In fact, I'll go as far as to say that the audio quality for this phone when you're recording video is better than the one for this camera. What you're hearing right now is the audio quality for my camera without the, the help of the USB snowball ice microphone that I have down here at the bottom that you cannot see that I usually record my audio with. And now what you're hearing is the sound coming into the microphone for the Kodak Ektra. This is a test after just filming this goddamn review. <laughs> yeah, rather significant improvement. So that kind of 
eased the disappointment that I had in the lack of features to tamper with during video recording mode, but this is definitely going to be the thing that I'm going to use for as a backup, like I said. Like, if I have to do an emergency type video where something significant just broke that I want to talk about and I don't have my camera with me, I'm not in this room, I'm out and about somewhere at my girlfriend's place or at school or something and I know that I need to take a video right now, this is the number one thing to go to. However, at the end of the day, this is still a phone and with a phone, you need to be able to take care of it. That includes carrying cases, shields, various other accessories that you would like to kind of appropriate with your phone. That's when the Kodak Ektra does run into a little bit of a speed bump because finding accessories, whether it be again like a shield protector to be able to cover up the screen from either scratches or most importantly smudges because Jesus Christ this thing is a smudge machine. I look at it on the reflection of the light and I can clearly see a shit ton of fingerprints and smudges already on the screen because it's a magnet for those. On top of that, the lens happens to have a similar glass coating on the top and when you do get smudges on the lens, they're very, very apparent on whatever photo or video that you're taking. It looks like there's Vaseline over the image, so that's a little disappointing, so you gotta make sure that you take a, say, a huge emphasis on making sure that you're protecting your screen and your lens at all times. So a carrying case and a s screen protector is very recommended but can be a little tough to come by because it's a rather unique model that Kodak provided here with the Ektra. So it's not going to be easy to just go to the mall and go to like one of those kiosks where they have cases and, and shields and all that or go to like Best Buy and check one down. You're going to have to either go online through Kodak's proprietary website or at least go on Amazon, which is what I did, and find some that are way cheaper than you would get from like a leather case that's going to set you back like 80 bucks from Kodak. So if you're a giant photo and video enthusiast, my recommendation would be to actually just stick with a DSLR camera, especially one that can record in 4K and take photos in the be best resolution possible with the best sensor and megapixel lens as possible. But this is a very decent backup. $400 might be asking for quite a lot because you do have some limited functionality with the video taking mode. And like I said, there's better options out there when it comes to being an enthusiast of taking videos for YouTube or taking photos as a profession, you're better off just getting a standard cell phone as, as a thing to be able to make calls and texts and the usual moment jumbo and then keep the DSLR on the side for your profession. But if you find this at a discount like I did, which was at $100, going from $400 to $100, or even at $150, like you would probably find either on Amazon or even uh, Walmart sells it for about $150, then that would be a much more suitable price to spend on something like this, especially if you're in the market for a brand new cell phone because you don't have anything right now and you are comfortable with the providers that are limited to this phone then by all means, go ahead and get it because like I said, you still have a very decent backup that is way better than the average cell phone and uh, better than the average cell phone camera, especially if that's where your emphasis is at. I appreciate with what Kodak was trying to do with this phone and I would be very supportive of future models being released like a sequel to this where they improve on some of the mechanics, they improve on some of the things that it could work at, especially what would ultimately be the deal maker, which is to take all of those DSLR functions that you could kind of mess around with in photo taking mode and put them into the video making mode. Oh my god, I am there. I am there day one. I will definitely upgrade, sell this off, and you'll end up with my money. But as it stands, this is a phone that is incredibly ambitious, but it came short on a number of things because it was having some identity issues trying to figure out from a camera standpoint whether it be to be a camera or to be a cell phone. So I'm going to be giving the Kodak Ektra a solid 8 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed my review of the Kodak Ektra. Let me know what you guys thought of this phone. Does it entice you? Do you think it looks kind of weak? Do you think it looks kind of weird that it looks like a camera but it's also a phone? on the side and do you think that this maybe paves the way for other companies like maybe Canon or Nikon to make their own smartphone? Would that even be a good idea to begin with? Please let me know all your guys' input in the comments below. Make sure you show your support with the video by hitting the like and share button down below and of course subscribe to the channel to show your support for it as well as stay staying in tune for future videos coming very soon. Until next time guys, see you all later. It kind of tries to do what certain other asymmetrical multiplayer games do where one character is this big powerful thing and then the other characters are just regular humans trying to take it down, a la Friday the 13th right now. 
Evolve, however, wasn't as pristine and polished as... Well, neither is Friday the 13th.